All right, so here we have section 2.7, which is on variation. So we want to be able to write models involving direct inverse and joint variation. And then we're going to actually look at an application problem involving variation. So direct inverse and joint variation, three different things, but kind of all similar. So we're going to look at direct and inverse first. So if we say that something is, uh, we're going to say in this case, we're going to call K. Before we even start, we need to define something called K. K is called the constant of variation. Okay, it's an important term. Constant of variation. All right, so if we're going to say that Y varies directly as X, this means that if Y is going up, X is going up. So as Y gets bigger, X gets bigger. Okay? That's all it means, that as one is changing, the other one is changing in the same direction. Okay? Inversely proportional means that as Y gets bigger, X has to be getting smaller. And this makes sense because if I divide by a small number, I get a big number. Okay? But the, in, the important part to remember are these two formulas, y equals kx or y equals k over x. So this is direct. This is inverse. Okay. Really, these are the two that we're going to deal with. Now, joint just means that they're both, uh, both of the things that we're varying by, w and x, are both being multiplied. So jointly is just a different type of direct variation, okay? So knowing these two things, that direct variation means we're multiplying times k, and the inverse means that we're taking k and dividing it by x, then we can look at how to solve, you know, variation models, okay? What I want to start with is I want to actually just write out the variation model using k as a constant of variation. So if I say that x varies directly as y, then x equals ky, okay? x varies, so x equals directly means k times y. So if z varies inversely as the cube of x, z varies inversely, k divided by the cube of x, how do I write the cube of x? That's just x cubed, okay? So t varies directly as w. t varies directly as w and inversely as q. Okay, inversely means divide by, directly means multiply by. What about a circle's area varies directly as the square of its radius r? So k r squared. And we know what k is in this case because we know the formula for area, right? What would k be? What's the formula for a circle, uh, the area of a circle? It's pi r squared, right? So in this case, k would be pi. The electrical resistance r of a wire varies directly as its length and inversely as the square of its diameter, so d squared. Hope you're following this. It's making a little bit of sense. You see that anytime we vary directly, we multiply times k, and anytime we vary inversely, we divide by whatever we're uh, inversely related to. Here we've got the rat speed through a maze. So S varies jointly as his hunger and the size of cheese at the end. Okay, so KHC. Last one, Z varies jointly as X and Y, so K, X, Y, and inversely as the square root of P. So most of the time when we're doing inverse variations, this setting up the problem is only half of it. Generally, we need to know what K is. So we need to know a little bit of information. So let's actually look at an application and I'm going to show you how to actually solve an application problem, okay? So say we have A varies directly as B. So A varies directly as B, 
and inversely SC. Here's our formula, but we really need to find K. So we're going to need some information. Well, we're given some information. If A equals 20, when B is equal to 4 and C is equal to 5, well, I'm given everything but K. I can just plug those in. 20 equals K times 4 divided by 5. So if I multiply both sides by 5, right, multiply, get rid of the, the fraction, we get 100 equals K times 4. Divide by 4, we get K equals 25. So our formula is actually A equals 25 B divided by C. So now we can go to the next part of the problem that says, then find B. So B is the one we're not going to know. When A equals 30 and C equals 20. So just plug those in. 30 equals 25B divided by C, which is 20. So we multiply both sides by 20. We get 600 equals 25B divided by 25. How many times will 25 go into 600? That would be like asking how many quarters are in $6. That would be 24, right? All right. I hope that makes some sense. Directions. Step one. Set up variation. Step two, solve for K. And then step three, solve for your unknown. All right, last problem here. The volume of a cone is jointly proportional to its height and the square of the radius of the base. The volume is 270 cubic inches when the height is 10 and the radius is 9. What's the volume when the height is 18 and the radius is 4? So let's start by setting up volume is jointly proportional to its height, so kh, and the square of the radius of the base, so r squared. So there's our formula. And we're given the volume is 270 cubic inches when the height is 10 and the radius is 9. So 270 equals K times 10 times 9. So we're going to divide by 10. That gives us 27 equals K times 9. Divide by 9, K equals 3. So this means that I have volume is equal to 3HR squared. Well, what is the volume? when h equals 18 and r equals 4. So it's going to be v equals 3 times 18 times r squared, so 4 squared, or 3 times 18 times 16. We get out our calculator. 3 times 18 times 16 equals 864 cubic inches. So. Start by finding K, use K, or start by finding the variation equation, then find K using the information you're given, and then plug that in and solve for the final remaining variable that you're uh, actually looking for, okay? So hopefully this makes a little bit of sense. Uh, if it doesn't, just shoot me a reminder or uh, ask a question in class.